Hello everybody and welcome. This is Dr. Lefkoff with another installment of IRGN 424 Corporate Finance here at the Graduate School of International Relations and Pacific Studies at UC San Diego. And in this installment, we're going to learn how to cash flow match a set of liabilities uh, using a portfolio of fixed income securities. So before I get into explaining what the, all that even means, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the notation that's going to be involved in solving the problem. Okay, so the first important variable here is PI. We're going to let that denote the price of an asset today. So that's how much it's going to cost us to actually purchase an asset in the portfolio uh, at time zero. And we're going to let YT denote the value of the liability that needs to be covered at time T. So that's the value of the obligation that we have to pay uh, using the interest payments from our portfolio. Okay, X sub IT uh, is going to denote the cash flow payments coming from asset I at time T in the future from a particular asset. And WI is going to denote the uh, expenditure, or you can think of this as the weight uh, of asset I in the portfolio. So it's how much money we're spending on asset I. Okay, informally, our problem is pretty straightforward. What we want to try to do is cover the set of liabilities using interest payments from a fixed income securities portfolio that we formed. Uh, and we would like to try to form this portfolio with a minimal expense required to do so. Uh, more formally, what this amounts to is for us to solve the following minimization problem here. Uh, but notice it's a constrained minimization. We have a couple constraints. The first constraint here, uh, the left-hand side is the cash flow in period T from the portfolio. And that's suggesting that the left-hand side has to be greater than or equal to uh, the value of the obligation that needs to be covered at time t. And this has to be true for all time periods. The second constraint here you'll notice is a non-negativity constraint on every asset. And what the non-negativity constraint does is that it rules out the possibility of short selling. So if you wanted to include a portfolio where you could potentially short sell some of the assets, uh, we could just get rid of that non-negativity constraint and then solve the same problem. Uh, sometimes you might deal with software programs that uh, make you uh, input the problem parameters as vectors, uh, but we can handle that very easily here. It's the same exact minimization problem of minimizing the dot product of the price of each asset by its weight, by the amount of the asset that we're going to hold, subject to, again, these two constraints. Um, and uh, let's get right into a basic cash flow matching problem using Excel. Okay, so uh, you'll notice I've set this uh, the Excel spreadsheet up in a very particular way. I'm going to use seven bonds here. So I've chosen seven different bonds. And for each bond in green here, we have the associated cash flows uh, occurring. So you'll notice, for example, bond one pays a coupon payment in period one of $5, another in period two of $5, in period three, four of $5, and then in the last period, you receive your coupon payment plus the par value, the face value of the bond. Uh, and this problem, we've assumed that there's five periods. Okay, notice also, uh, we have our liabilities that need to be met each period. So these are the expenditures, the obligations that we're going to have. And what we want to do is we want to structure a bond portfolio using these seven bonds to guarantee that we meet all these liabilities from the interest payments that are being paid from these bonds. So, uh, before we can solve the problem, what we actually need to do is we need to calculate what's going to go in these columns here. So, uh, in this column L, in these blue cells, uh, we're going to compute the cash flow from the portfolio in a given period. So, for example, here, since we're in this row for period one, this is going to be the total cash flow from our portfolio in period one. And the way we can easily calculate this is just by taking the weight of the portfolio, and notice we don't have a value there yet, but we're gonna solve for it in a second. We're gonna take the weight in the portfolio uh, times the cash flow occurring in that period from that portfolio. So again, it's the number of these bonds that we buy times the coupon, number of coupon payments we get in that period. Okay, but notice I'm gonna also wanna do this for period, or sorry, for asset two, and for asset three, take the weight, multiply it by the number of coupon payments for asset four, uh, five, so on and so forth for six and seven. Uh, there's a very easy way to do that using the sum product function, which essentially lets you take the dot product of two vectors. So I'm gonna highlight my weights here is gonna be my first vector. 
In fact, let's use this dollar sign trick. So I'm going to put a dollar sign around the letters. And what that will do is let me just click and drag this formula down and make the same calculation for all the other periods as well. So again, we're taking the dot product of the weight vector. with this vector of cash flow payments coming from all the different bonds in period one. And notice right now it has a value of zero and I'm gonna click and drag that formula down. And they all have values of zeros now because we haven't, we haven't placed any weights in the portfolio. And right now there's all zero weights. We also want to calculate the cost of the portfolio. So you'll notice we do have the prices of our bonds. Okay, the cost of the portfolio is just going to be the price of each bond times the quantity of each bond, and then we're going to sum that across all the bonds. So again, I can use this trick with the sum product function. I'm going to highlight the price array or the price vector as well as the weight vector because I'm going to take the sum product or the dot product of those two. And again, it's zero, but you'll notice we can very easily start to change these numbers around. And, uh, and now it changes the cash flows provided for us as well as show us the cost of the portfolio. So let's start with a blank slate here. And what we're going to do next is we're going to invoke the solver function uh, in Excel to figure out the optimal weight that will solve the minimization problem that we had just seen in the previous slide. Okay, so to, font, to invoke the solver function, I'm going to go to data. If you already have it installed, you'll see it occur in the top right corner here. Uh, if you don't have it installed, you can right click the top right corner, customize the quick access toolbar. Go over to add-ins. And then I'm just going to click go. And this screen pops up. I'm going to add the solver add-in. Okay. And you'll notice now the solver add-in has popped up in the top right corner. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now the solver screen has popped up. And what it's asking us is to set our objective function. So our objective, recall, was to minimize the total expenditure on the portfolio, which is the cost of the portfolio. And you'll notice that is this cell right here, L10. So I'm going to minimize the cost. And we're going to do this by changing the weights, right? The weights in the portfolio are our choice variable here. So we're going to change these guys I'm sorry about that. Just got rid of some constraints that were put in there already. Hey, but keep in mind uh, we do have several constraints here. Our constraints were that the cash flows had to at least cover the liabilities. So I need to make sure that everything showing up in this blue column here, uh, all these values are greater than the corresponding red values in the liability column. So let's go ahead and add in this constraint. Okay, so our cell reference, we're saying that we need the liabilities to be less than or equal to, right? So it's a less than or equal to the cash flow payments. Okay, notice also uh, we could add in the non-negativity constraints here explicitly, but there's actually a function, this check mark box here. It says make unconstrained variables non-negative. It's already doing that for us. So we're going to go ahead and hit solve. It should solve the exact problem we're looking for. I'm going to keep the solver solution. It says it found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Okay. Uh, and if you look, here it's telling us exactly what to do. So we're going to buy 571 of that of bond one, 505 of bond two, none of bond three, none of bond six, but we can see exactly how many bonds we should buy. Uh, and we see we very, very, very closely uh, have matched the cash flows of this portfolio. There's a little bit of rounding error, but for the most part, we've done this uh, fairly well. Okay, total cost of matching this portfolio here looks to be $224,972 and about 69 cents. So that was cash flow matching a portfolio to a set of liabilities in under 10 minutes. See you next time.